Okay. So this is this little guy's birthday. So when this animal, so this is an albino, this is a T negative water monitor. So when this little guy first hatches, he is pre, he's preconceived to think every single animal is out there to eat, eat him. And so they'll often hatch out and they want to bite you and they'll want to like uh, freak out because I'm a giant monster and uh, I love this guy, but he does not know what is going on. So what we do straight out of the egg, I've already played with this guy, so he's not trying to bite, but he was just born this morning. And right off the bat, I do things that are all supportive. This is all supportive. So I, I'm gently touching him or her. And I work on all this, and what I'm working on is I'm waiting for the brain to start reducing the fear and actually going, oh, this actually isn't bad. Nothing's bad, it's happening to me. And what's happening here, so as I pet him, see the tongue going? So when I do that, I'm causing it to go into a recording mode. So what it's doing, it's now recording this experience. The tongue's going, and what I'm doing is I'm working on all of this and I'm working on the, the lower mandible, and I'm rubbing, and I'm actually doing things that actually don't feel bad. And if I can get him out of fear mode, where he'd be trying to bite me and all that, into thinking mode, this animal's in thinking mode. Thinking mode, you can recognize when we have tongue flicking and all that. A lot of times when they're being really fearful, you won't get a lot of tongue flicking because they're waiting for the next thing to happen or possibly it's chance to explode and try to escape. So we're, we're working with this little guy and we do this with a lot of little water monitors, even dwarf came and whatever. And this, this process is what we call socialization. And to some people this might be taming, but this is socialization. What socialization truly is, is working with the animal, getting it into a thinking state. So it's for one of the four modes it has sleeping mode, it has fear mode, it has thinking mode and also has uh, I'm eating modes where it's, it's fashioning a way to get its prey. And we wanna work with thinking mode. If we're actually handling an animal while it's in fear mode, a lot of times we can actually exacerbate or create a problem even when there shouldn't be a problem because we're pushing ourselves on an animal that is not intellectually or not mentally at the, the point where it actually can understand what you're doing. It goes into fear mode, it feels like its life is being threatened, so therefore it starts becoming irrational and it's reactive. Reactiveness is, um, they're, they're, you walk into the room where you do something and they're reacting and their brain shuts down and then they just start letting, let you know, use their uh, normal uh, nature, fear, predator response and that is something that we really wanna work out of. So we have to establish trust and this is how we establish trust. So let's go with a blank slate. Why don't we go and cut open an egg? So it's taken about six and a half months for these guys to hatch. So you see right here, they start slicing. So I can sit here. The blood vessels inside the egg have dropped. So this animal's just gonna sit there in his egg and he's gonna breathe air. And when they're breathing air, their meta metabolism speeds up and they're absorbing that yolk. So right now I'm just kind of staying right close to the surface of the egg. Okay, so now we have a little baby. Look at this guy, look how cute you are. So we have this little guy sitting in here. Can't angle it for me? There we go. Oh. This one seems to be pre-socialized. What's going on uh, there? This is, this Genetically is what it's this disposed. Is, yeah. Yeah, actually selective breeding. So it's just like anything, you know, with foxes and stuff like that. So genetically, when they were uh, kind of domesticating foxes, they've learned that some fox have the gene to be crazy and non-trusting of humans. And then some of them actually think more, they're less reactive. And those are the ones that are closer, you know, towards domest domestication. And that's called line breeding, selective breeding, for attributes which are inheritable. So genetic, genotypical attributes that when we breed those together, we're creating lines of animals that are more likely to uh, have the attributes that we like. In this case, sweet, wonderful lizards. So we got this little guy right here. And right off the bat, we're already starting. Tongue flicking. He's Nothing is tearing into the egg and trying to eat him. This is just all good. 
Hi, baby. And believe it or not, these guys will come out and try to bite. But I can, a lot of times, I can bypass some of that by doing this. And I just got to let him realize, wow. Okay, so we just had the tongue goes down the side of the mouth. When they do that, so we have the tongue coming out right here. Now I'll start petting. And what we're trying to do is when you get the tongue going down the side of the mouth, that means it's just like downloaded its information. So right now, think, think, think. He's a little worried. There you go, right there. That was it. You see it, Donnie? The tongue went down the side of the mouth. That means everything's okay. I'm taking a minute. I'm pausing and I'm downloading the information. And now, once again, we're back into a new thinking mode. And it just keeps repeating itself. And this is really, there you go, right there. That was it. Like, I I'm, sounds like I'm making this stuff up, but this is exactly how this works. Okay, so he's going to come out. Let's see his little. Okay, so there's his, there's his little umbilicus. So that is the remaining bit of its yoke. And I don't want to drop him, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to let him go into the water. No! Okay, but everything is okay. And once again, supportive, just like this. Right there. I should get a nice tongue in a second. Watch. He's going to he's going to go. Okay. Well, this camera's a little scary. It's it's bouncing lots of infrared on this guy. So what there you go. Just did it. You got it. So that's good. So believe it or not, this kind of stuff actually works. And uh just wanting to head, don't forget. Mm. No. It's bonding. I hope everybody's sending their best wishes to Brian Barcheck. We love Brian Barcheck and uh I'm really impressed with the, the kindness that has been occurring for Brian Barcheck. The NARBC auction, a whole bunch of money was raised. Oh, look at that. Look at what? Stand strong. Oh, look at that. Brian Barcheck. Bar Barcheck. I'm not surprised you're wearing that. It means Any, that you anything. Brian it. can, for, for the Brian's benefit, anything. So this is T negative albino. So this is the uh, genetic control that says do not create melanin. So uh, T negative albinism is m the melanin control shut off. Hi, baby. So we're going to do the same thing right here. Everything touch. So he's like really apprehensive. Is this a monster that just dug up my nest? There you go. He just did the tongue. So I'm teaching you guys, hopefully, and this is very applicable. I don't care if it's a toke gecko, it's a chipmunk, it's whatever. And what we're doing is we're doing something where the animal is learning to trust us. Oh, he's doing it a whole bunch. And you're, you're promoting positive, a positive reinforcement that this animal can then accept you into its environment and not as a threat. And when that happens, we actually start seeing the animal for what it is. Oh, this is wonderful. He's, like, he's really liking it. So remember, animals are tactile. They can really enjoy being rubbed and pet. Believe it or not, and that's a fact. This isn't, you know, nonsense because this works really well. And I have a bunch of, uh, I have obviously hundreds of socialized different little water monitors and they crave interaction. So I've been working specifically on lines uh, for some of the sweetest. I'm also working on lines to make some of the smallest salvators. So water monitors that in some cases are nearly Argus monitor size, but we're definitely working on smaller water monitors because these are obviously intended as pets. So there you go, you can see the little umbilicus. Primordial slime. You gonna bite the umbilicus off like you normally no. do? Come on, dude. No. Do it so, for the camera. So right now, this is this is a little bit, I don't generally do this because this animal's a little bit fragile. And what we want to do is, so they're umbilicus, right? So you see what's going on? It's going to need to absorb all that. So I like to put them in this water base and uh, not, not handling. So something very, very important. When little baby reptiles have their umbilicus, so that's their, their you know, belly button, and they, they have their yolk and they're absorbing it through that pathway. And then at the very end, they'll pull in everything. And then what happens is, is that umbilicus, the muscle cinches it off. So it tightens it and uh, that prevents all the stomach contents and all the belly and organs and stuff like that from falling out. So we don't do a lot of handling. Everything is very, very passive. 
It's this guy. Literally, what I'm doing is is not. There's no. I'm doing this to to just enjoy this animal. But generally, what we'll do is we'll wait for the little babies to come out on their own. And because uh, one of the problems is if I dicker with the eggs too much and they're not ready to hatch, I can cause them to come out too soon, and they'll have they'll tear free of their umbilicus, so they never get the nutritional content that nature designed them to have. And sometimes that can be a real problem and that actually can sacrifice the life of that animal. So right now, I was doing this to show you guys. Look at that little, this is a water monitor. So you see that fin? It's got on the top of his tail. And uh, hopefully in the next uh, week or two, I might have some pretty fancy water monitors hatching out. You're so lovely. And not that this isn't wonderful, but imagine this with a black dragon. And then... We're working on uh, ivory monitors, so the white monitors. So they'd be pure white monitors. I just yawned, it was really cute. Did he? Did you get it? He was in frame. So cute. I love you so much. This is such a wonderful animal. Hi, baby. So just, he, he knows where he wants to go, which is away from the infrared of the camera. So I'll do this until I get that. There you go, that's it. Donnie, you're gonna become an expert. I'm an expert, all right. What are you talking about? Okay, so that is some of the beginning aspects of socialization, and we do that. So uh, we interact with our water monitors every day, uh, you know, constantly cleaning them and, and managing them. And what this does is creates familiarity. Familiarity that you're part of their environment, you're not going to hurt them. Remember, we're redefining how their brain works, how they articulate thought, because naturally this animal is predisposed to think that Animals, certainly mucking with them, animals playing with them are potential predators. But we're so great. I love it. I love hatching reptiles. I, I just, it's, it's everything because I'm forever fascinated by them. And this makes all the struggles of life, and I have a lot, um, makes it better for at least for a few moments. Because these are just amazing. Um, water monitors are probably one of, my favorite, uh, there's, there's, these guys are so content, they're so sweet, are some of my favorite species, if not possibly my favorite species, because you see that? Yeah. That's so great. Because they're brains. And even with a normal paint job, although this is a head albino, I still love it just the same it, because of the brain. The brain is even more important than the look, the personality, and my interaction with them is awesome. I'll pull out something else that I'll show you I have a really great relationship with that many people wouldn't believe. And those are dwarf caiman. And this is actually one of my babies that I produced. I can brag for a second. I have bred dwarf caimans 10 times. And now I'm working on my 11th time. But I love, love these. They're so friggin' cute. You're like, what is all that infrared light? Um, but when you socialize them, and you work with the brain and you're always doing support, supportive therapy essentially, which you're basically, he hates your camera, but he's worried about your camera, but I'm not the worry. It's, it's all that infrared, but that now he's, he's peeing on me. Oh, he deserves it. Dude, look what you did. Your camera sucks. Yeah. Hello. But anyways, so this is all because of socialization, getting to be able to do that. That's good. I mean, I've definitely heard people always contact us about our dwarfs and ask how ours are like this and theirs are trying to kill them. So you must be doing something right. I hatch them out. I hand hatch them and I play with them. You can actually check out some other videos uh, hatching out dwarf caimans on this channel. And before long, I'm going to be building a big display for my dwarf caiman, which I'm looking forward to. I want to get another female too. All right, guys, thank you very much for once again watching this video and liking, subscribing. I really appreciate your support. I love to read your comments, and I do try to read your comments. You guys, are there's so much nice people. Our fans, uh, I'm very happy to have my fan base, people such as yourselves that actually uh, see what I'm saying as, as interesting because, you know, I'm a weird person. <laughs> so... I like to show off my animals and I like to hopefully some of my ideas you can take and use for your own and help you socialize things because I am all about animals. I love animals. I'm not a human lover, but I mean, I love my friends and my fans and all that. And I, cause I appreciate you guys. If you love animals, then you're on my team 
And uh, let's all have our best wishes for Brian Barchak right now. And I'm going to still be going to South Africa. Some people have been asking me, are you still going to go to South Africa? Because I was going to go there and meet with Brian. So hopefully we're going to help Brian still enjoy the trip because when we're going to be filming there, Brian Barchak is going to be in our mind. He's going to be forever on the tip of our tongue in the trip. So we're going to be filming, thinking about things. We want to share the experiences with him so he can still enjoy himself. And I get to hang out with my buddy, Dingo. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!